Hey Coffee Geeks, back with another video. Today talking about fixed price coffee buying. And I don't mean like buying coffee off the shelf and keeping prices stable there, though that's good. Um, I'm talking about green coffee buying. Um, green coffee buying is a really, really uh, convoluted or can be kind of a convoluted endeavor for a couple of reasons. First, most coffee, green coffee, raw coffee, is bought on what's called a commodity market. Coffee is a commodity, and a lot of it is not that good, and it's sold in bulk. Um, and that the price for that commodity grade coffee gets dictated by really financial trading. Um, and so these financial traders will buy contracts and sell contracts that they would use to then purchase coffee. These contracts represent coffee that's supposed to be in the market. And um, depending on how these financial markets work, it drives the price of commodity coffee up and down. And so you may or may not have heard the price for commodity grade coffee or the commodity price for coffee is super low, like crazy low, like 10, 20 year lows right now. I'm looking at the report that I look at every day and it, it says that the price for a pound of coffee right now is 95.8 cents. That's pretty low, especially when you consider like the global average for cost of production is $1.40. So we have this financial market that's driving the cost of commodity coffee down very, very low. Now, we don't buy commodity coffee, we buy specialty grade coffee. But uh, a lot of specialty coffee actually gets sold based on commodity prices. So if the commodity price is 95 cents, you know, we would buy coffee on what's called a differential. It's the commodity price plus this set amount for the quality of the coffee that we're buying. So for instance, uh, you know, a differential um, in Colombia might be anywhere from 80 cents to a dollar 20 on top of the commodity price. So let's say that the commodity price is a dollar, we would pay anywhere from a dollar 80 to two dollars and 20 cents per green pound um, based on differential pricing. So that's how you buy a specialty coffee based on the commodity market. The problem with that is if you're a producer and you're used to getting $1.20 on top of the commodity price, and you're used to a relatively average commodity price of $1.50, you're getting anywhere from you know, $2.30 to $2.75 a pound for your coffee, which is well above the cost of production and allows you to do reinvestment. It allows you to take care of your farm, pay your workers more, etc. But if the commodity market hits the crapper, like we've seen happen, um, it really takes your profit margin down substantially. So we've been watching this happen, um, and, and Stone Creek has, has you know, bought through a variety of pricing methods in the past. We bought off differentials, so you know, plus 80, plus 120, um, plus 150 off of the commodity price, but we've also dealt with fixed price contracts. And so this is where we say, and, and Misepa is a good example. We've been doing the, this with them for a long time. Misepa Co-op out of Costa Rica. We say, listen, we'll pay you two dollars and seventy cents, or, or in Guatemala three dollars um, a pound for your coffee over the next four years. So we don't even care what the commodity market does. We're just going to say, hey, we can count on this price. You can count on us paying you this much for your coffee, and off we go. It's a really stable way of working and it allows producers to know, hey, they're going to have this much volume and they're going to get this much uh, money for their coffee year after year. It allows them to do larger investment planning and it helps us understand, hey, we're going to pay this much for our coffee every year so we can put it in our budget and understand how it's going to work, project what our financials will be like based on that pricing. So we definitely prefer to work that way, to remove the volatility of the commodity market out of the equation and just have these really tight relationships with our partners. So we worked a lot actually last year as we were going through our budgeting season, which we're in right now for 2020. We worked to get out of commodity-based pricing by almost all of our coffee 
on fixed price long-term contracts. So I mentioned we had agreements with MISEPA out of Costa Rica. Well, we also were able to establish an agreement with Long Miles out of Burundi, with the LaRue family out of Nicaragua, with our co-ops out of Huila, Colombia, and with Carmo Coffees out of Brazil. So we've been able to take all of these coffees and make sure that there's a lot of stability in the pricing, both for us and for the producers, and keep the, the prices well above cost of production, like I said. I mean, on average, it's roughly a dollar more than cost of production, which what's included in cost of production is labor, cost of goods, like cost of actually producing the coffee in terms of fertilizer, upkeep, et cetera. And so when you're covering all of that stuff, that's literally all of their costs, that gives them a healthy profit margin to allow for changes in their infrastructure, to reinvest in new plants or even more property. So we're super proud of that work. Like a lot of the coffee out there, as I said, doesn't get bought on that. And so we really tried to take a step when the market was low, when we could buy you know, coffee pretty cheap because the C market was pretty low, we really wanted to take a step and say, you know what, let's try and break this cycle of C market volatility that can cause a lot of grief for producers and really eliminate a lot of their profit margins. Let's get these long-term contracts in place so they can count on us and we can count on them moving into the future. Um, if you are interested in learning more about green coffee buying and pricing, uh, reach out to me. I'll put a, a link actually in this, uh, the notes on this video. Caravella Coffee did a large study in cost of production that's really, really interesting. And then Daily Coffee News also tends to have a good information about uh, coffee trading, the C market to help you learn more. So don't hesitate to reach out if you're interested in learning more. Hopefully this has helped you understand a little bit about how we buy coffee and what's important to us. Of course, buying coffee, as I mentioned, can be pretty complicated. And so we'll talk more in the future about you know how to move coffee from farm to cup and what goes all into that. But I thought starting with coffee pricing would be helpful, particularly as we work through this time of the C market being so low and causing a lot of uh, issues for coffee producers. Let me know if you have any other questions. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great week and I hope your fall's off to a great start and we'll see you soon.